Hi, my name is Hubbard and welcome to today's video in which we will just do crazy stuff which I hope you won't ever try at home because it's really stupid and dangerous and uh, well we are going to use this very ugly fan which obviously was designed in the 80s or 90s I don't know it's a very loud piece of crap and um, we are going to use this to actually cool down my laptop which is an Acer Predator Helios 300 with an i7 um, and a GTX 1060 and we will take a look if this is going to get us anywhere. So for today's videos this is the laptop we are going to tweak and tune and please be aware that this is something that you should not do at home at all costs uh, because it's very dangerous to open your laptop and having it running at the same time there can be a shortage you can get hurt you can destroy your laptop so don't do this at home please and as you just saw this is today's case fan it's just a regular stand-up fan i i um, took away the feet so i can lay it down and actually i had to tweak this fan before i could use it for this test because i noticed that when i was laying it down it was it would turn off because inside there was a small mechanism that would click and it recognizes which way is up and down so i opened it and turned this around so the um, the fan would think that this is the way it was standing up and it will still work and i'm going to build some construct to actually fit the laptop onto this and the reason why i chose this um, is not only because it's very flat and i can lay it down i can just place it on top on some bricks maybe so it is able to suck air fresh air um, from down below but the reason is that it's made of plastic and when I place the laptop on top of it there's no um, risk of uh, shortaging any um, anything on the motherboard of the laptop because the motherboard is going to be exposed once we open the laptop all right okay so the first thing is that um, we are going to run some tests with the laptop before we open it to see um, temperatures and stuff. I'm going to run ADA64 stress test and then later maybe some Cyberpunk 2077 stress test. And then we are going to compare this with, uh, with the results that we get with our new case fan, which is going to be highly unpractical and probably pretty unstable and I'm hoping that I'm not going to destroy my nice laptop and um, well just don't do this at home all right so after our first test which was done without undervolting and I was running IDA64 stress tests for the CPU and the GPU for around 10 minutes and the CPU is around 85 to 92 degrees warm and the GPU hangs around 81 degrees celsius the clock of the cpu as you can see it dropped down right in the beginning it throttled to around 2.4 um, between 2.4 to 2.8 gigahertz per core um, the highest boost clock it would be able to get uh, with all cores would be 3.4 gigahertz so we're losing quite um, the performance um, here right after we started the test, as you can see over here, just like one or two minutes later, it throttled down immediately. Mind that this was made with the case closed, so the laptop is not opened yet, and I've not undervolted the CPU. And the power uh, of the fans is just in standard mode, so they're not um, spinning extra fast. All right, so after uh, about 10 or 12 minutes um, later, the next test was done with undervolting the CPU and as we can see the curve is not um, as strict as the first one it, it takes longer for the CPU and the GPU to get warm and they don't get as warm so we have around 76 degrees for the GPU which we didn't undervolt but as they share the same heat pipes in the laptop it's affected as well and the CPU is around uh, 75 to 82 degrees so that's quite a bit cooler and um, when we look at the clocks, we can also see that even though it is still throttling, it, well, it took longer until it throttled. As you can see over here, it started to throttle immediately and it stayed down 
uh, it stayed throttled all the time. And here the CPU manages to get back to its boost club at least for a few seconds and then uh, throttles back down. And now the next test that we will do is with the fan curve um, very aggressive, so the fans blow at maximum speed all the time, and we will see how that is going to affect the results this time. Oh, and I just forgot. As you can see, the blue, the blue line right here in the middle above the um, pink line, that's the GPU um, boost clock. And as you can see at the beginning, it throttles down right a bit, and then it stays stable, and at the end, it dropped again, and we will see if that is a factor when we open the case and um, add the fan to the game. So now with this test, the case is still closed, but now the laptop is undervolted, and I put the fan speed at maximum, and we will see how that is going to turn out. So this time, the CPU and the GPU end around the same degrees that we had the last time, which means that the fans would um, speed up to the maximum power level anyway, so it didn't make that much of a difference really. And um, the clocks also um, point out that at the beginning it was stable and it uh, was stable for a longer time than without undervolting, so undervolting helped, um, no doubt about this. And we have to keep in mind that this test is very extreme demanding um, for the CPU. So I'm going to test uh, the same with an um, in-game. Uh, next I'm going to fire up Cyberpunk 2077 and um, take a look at how the uh, CPU can handle the boost clock because I think that if we undervolt and um, um, put the fans at max speed that it, it will be able to keep a stable power boost of around uh, 3.4 gigahertz on all cores. All right, so after 20 minutes of running Cyberpunk in this bar, um, still having a closed case, I was achieving around 85, 84, 83 degrees Celsius for the CPU and it was not throttling down, as you can see here. It's still maintaining that 3.5 gigahertz boost clock um, that's being undervolted and for the GPU we have around 76 to 77 degrees Celsius right now with a boost clock of 720 to 760 it's jumping up and down a bit which is pretty normal that gives us around 40 to 41 FPS in this scene and we're going to um, take the same scene for the next test which will be upon this beast and we will see how the temperatures um, will develop and if that affects the boost clock of the GPU and um, the overall FPS. So, let's see. Before I start building um, this thing up, I just wanted to give you a quick look of um, the inside of my laptop so you can see uh, the motherboard here. Um, there's a problem that I have to solve, which is not um, hard to solve, the hard disk which sits here, is installed in the um, bottom of the laptop case. So we'll have to unscrew that, place it here, fix it with some tape to install it. Otherwise I won't be able to boot the laptop because there's no OS. And as you can see, there's lots of metal stuff going on here on a laptop motherboard. So if this would be plastic, this would probably shorten something over here. But that's not going to happen in this case. Still, don't try this at home. Usually the first thing that you should do if you open a laptop like this is to unplug the battery, which we don't do because then it won't turn on. Okay, now for the first step I was just using my son's bricks, um, wood bricks, um, to raise the laptop above the fan or otherwise there would be too much pressure from this little um, hill up on the motherboard and um, fixated that with some gaffer tape. Yeah, that looks very nice and very professional. Don't do this at home, please just don't do this. But it seems to be stable and I can lift um, the whole fan without the laptop falling down. All right, the next thing will be to raise the fan a bit or otherwise it would not be able to suck up fresh air. I tried this, if I turn it on like this, there's no air actually 
um, arriving up here unless I lift the whole thing up and then it starts to sound different and sucks up the air from below. So now <laughs> I placed uh, the whole fan on something which is actually our fruit bowl but it seems to be just fine because it's round so I can place this up and it has um, spaces in between so it's actually perfect for the fan to allow uh, getting fresh air from below. I don't know if you can still hear me but this uh, fan is super loud actually it's not a good fan by any means. Um, it actually is almost as loud as um, a Hoover um, and uh, yeah but as we can see the temperatures already they, um, they are not going to go as high as before and I will check back later in about 15 minutes or so to see how that turns out. Okay, now that I've figured that I should just use my uh, smartphone's headset, it's not as loud as anymore as before. And as we can see, temperatures <laughs> went way down. The GPU hangs around 62 degrees after around 15 minutes and the CPU is also way cooler. It stays around 66 to 75 degrees Celsius. And now let's have a look at the clocks. And as you can see, didn't throttle down anymore at all. It stayed at 3.4 gigahertz all the time um, due to the test. And now let's have a look at Cyberpunk 2077 and see if that's going to affect our overall FPS. And I just wanted to show you quickly then, uh, the moment I turned off the test, the temperatures drop down really really fast, a lot faster than without the, the fan, of course, obviously. But it's just insane, it's already back to 31 degrees for the GPU and 40 degrees on the CPU, which is actually its normal uh, idle temperature. Alright, so after around 20 minutes of um, standing around in this bar and not ordering something, I'm sorry lady, um, we're getting, yeah, that, that's insane. We're getting 66 degrees for the CPU on the full load. So of course there's no throttling and only not 59 degrees on the GPU. But as you can see, the FPS is not really affected. Um, that's because the boost clock of the GPU is not higher than before, which I can only explain due to the power limit of the laptop's uh, motherboard. Um, the GPU just not getting more energy um, and the boost clock is not getting any higher even though it's only around 59 degrees Celsius. So the next thing I would do is try to overclock the GPU a bit, which I usually cannot do in this laptop because it's just getting too warm, too hot and um, clocking down immediately after, after I overclock it. So let's try this um, and then we will end this very weird experiment. So after lingering around another 15 to 20 minutes in this bar, um, having overclocked the laptop's GPU by around 150 megahertz on the chip clock and 375 megahertz for the RAM, you can see we are getting around one to two, sometimes three FPS more, so it's not really worth it. But the temperatures stay quite acceptable, still at 59 degrees for the GPU which is amazing and 70 degrees for the CPU so um, and still not throttling so um, as a conclusion I would say this is absolutely not worth it at all um, it's absolutely enough in case of this laptop to just ramp up the fans to maximum speed um, which provides throttling in games for this unit and um, yeah, this is just so heavily unprofessional. But I hope you enjoyed this little test today. Um, well, see you next time. Bye bye and tschüss. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like shenanigans like this. And like this video if you liked the content. Thank you. Bye bye.